child dies every 10 seconds of starvation. But you probably don't think about the world hunger crisis on a regular basis. You probably think about the work you have to get done, the football game that's on tomorrow, or what you're going to eat for dinner. It's not something that occupies your thoughts on a regular basis, but that's to be expected because most of us are so far removed from the feeling of starvation. There are many reasons for this lack and far awayness. The first being that other people are already taking the responsibility. We rely on NGOs, governments, and people like the UN to make, fix the mess for us. So we don't have to directly play an active role. Sometimes we'll feel that moral burden when we throw away half a plate of food that we haven't finished because we're not hungry enough, or we leave something in the fridge for too long until it's caked with mold. But it's not a moral burden that we constantly experience. It's not covered in the news unless there's some form of natural disaster, and we just don't hear about it. So that's OK, right? We're so far away that it doesn't even affect us. But that's not really true. What if I were to tell you that something you do every single day and something you have control over is causing someone else to be starving? A wild misconception is that this crisis is due to scarcity of resources and overpopulation, meaning there's just too many people and the world can't sustain that. But this just is simply untrue. We grow enough food to feed 10 billion people. This is crazy considering so many people in this world are still starving. And why is this? Well, firstly, us as consumers, we are wasteful, we don't know how to share or delegate properly, so the richest get everything and the poorest get nothing. And as producers, we are both inefficient and unethical, not only to these people who are starving, but also to animals, the environment, and ourselves. This shows that this is a problem of inequality and poverty, not of scarcity. We're growing enough food to feed so many people, but where is it going? As our society becomes more consumerist, there is so much more of a demand, which is turning into more supply. This shows that even though devastation and scarcity isn't the problem, what is? Well, 50% of all grain that's produced worldwide goes to livestock. Now, this means that grain that is produced in LEDCs or lower economically developed countries is going towards these livestock, which is then going towards human consumption. Now, I'm sure you are all aware of the hunger crisis in Ethiopia. It's a country which is rich in culture, however, home some of the most impoverished and starving people in the world. There's a lot of variables to this crisis, some being the fact that it has a drought-prone climate, the food is incredibly expensive, and that all links to the fact that it's just poor. However, they are the fourth largest producer of corn in the world, back, um, following the US, China, and Brazil. So if they're producing so much corn, where is it all going? To understand this, we must first understand how the food that we eat gets to our tables. Middlemen dictate prices for grain from poor grain farmers who don't have a choice. The price that is set is the price that they can either take or leave. This means that they are staying in poverty, selling food, and then not receiving enough money to feed themselves. This grain <laughs> then goes from the middlemen to companies to livestock. And then there's the whole production of raising the cattle, producing the cattle, slaughtering the cattle, then packaging the cattle and sending it into more economically developed countries. So this shows that food production isn't going towards humans. It's going towards pigs, cows, poultry, sheep, whatever kind of livestock you can think of. And to make it even worse, to, create, to produce one kilogram of beef, it takes up to 15 kilograms of grain. So think about how many more people could be eating if you just ate the grain at a much higher nutritional value instead of just eating that one kilogram of beef. Animal agriculture is simply inefficient. The amount of water needed is absolutely outstanding. It is possibly the most inefficient and unsustainable process that I can think of. We like to blame thirst and poverty on natural disasters, waterborne diseases, or 
sorry, uh, lack of access to clean or potable water. However, 23% of global fresh water supply goes towards livestock. Think about the drought in Ethiopia. If that water was going towards them, perhaps they would get out of the conditions they're in. And please don't believe that this is just for meat, because 477 gallons of water go to producing just one pound of eggs, and 900 gallons of water go to producing just one pound of cheese. Please remember that this is also leather, fur, and any other animal products are part of this process. Oops. The animal agriculture industry produces more um, greenhouse gases than all transportation combined. Methane from the animals themselves, the production plants, the amount of uh, energy needed to slaughter and package the animals, the amount of energy needed for transportation because this food spoils so easily that it has to go through freezer trucks. We seem to be so worried about the impacts of climate change and its implications, and it's all we seem to talk about on news and social media, but decide to remain blissfully ignorant to one of the biggest contributors in the world. And also, <laughs> the leading cause, it's the leading cause of de deforestation, um, the land to grow crop and then to raise the animals and slaughter the animals is a ridiculous amount. If we look here, uh, just to, with one acre of arable land, we can grow 50,000 pounds of tomatoes, 53,000 pounds of potatoes, 3,000 pounds of carrots, or just 250 pounds of beef. So think about the nutritional value and the uh, abundance of food that could be going towards people who are starving, but instead will feed just one or two with one kilogram of beef. I also want to focus on the health repercussions of eating meat and animal products. I know that this doesn't directly link to the world hunger crisis, but it does directly link to you. Um, so firstly, processed meats and red meats have been proven to be a carcinogenic. They, prove they can cause cancer. Uh, dairy is horrific for your digestive system. It has an incredible amount of hormones and pus, which might say is supposed to turn a 50-pound cow into a, a 500-pound cow, is a cause of obesity and acne, uh, and has been caused to, uh, shown to cause breast lumps and breast cancer, not just in women, but also in men. Eggs, and along with all animal products, have high cholesterol and humans produce our own cholesterol. We don't need excess, which is why people have high or low cholesterol, because their body doesn't know what to do with this. S cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, cancers, the list goes on, and all of this links back to what you eat. So you're not just killing others of starvation, you're also killing yourself. If you want to learn more about this, I'd highly recommend you watch the documentary What the Health. It's really, really interesting and shares a lot about the health repercussions. If you want to learn more about the ethics side, please watch Forks Over Knives. And if you want to learn more about the environmental aspects, then Cowspiracy is a really, really interesting one to focus on. Um, so the idea that this crisis is due to overpopulation, lack of space, or lack of food is just frankly untrue. Blaming people's poverty and starvation on uncontrollable occurrences is in denial. This is a problem of inequality, overconsumption, and waste. And we live our lives as if we're so out of reach, pushing all of the responsibility onto NGOs, the governments, who are struggling with all of this weight on their shoulders. But for what? Are we really that removed? No. As individuals, communities, and as people, we are willing to sacrifice what is right for what is comfortable. Animal products taste good. They're easy to access, they're easy to prepare. Animal products are cultural and they have history. However, it is just simply unsustainable and it's a leading cause of world hunger. It simply takes a disproportionate amount of resources to produce such a small amount of food. So there's a simple way to eradicate this and it's a simple change in attitude. Think about what you buy, its impact on future and current generations. Please ask yourself, is this worth all of the repercussions of deadly starvation, destruction of the planet, and destruction of yourself? This is not an unsolvable crisis, even though it's painted as one. You have direct links to it. So next time you order something at a restaurant, or you buy something at the grocery store, 
please ask yourself if that 15 minutes of satisfaction as you eat that meal is worth all of the deadly and starvation repercussions. A child dies every 10 seconds. In the duration of this talk, that means around 60 children will have died. You have the power to stop it. So please think about changing your habits, educating yourself on where your food is coming from, and cha making changes in your diet. Thank you.